Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to those who are watching us online and worshiping with us. If you have any joys or concerns, please put them in the comments and we will add them to our prayers today. For all the rest of you here in the sanctuary, there are friendship pads, or I think that's what they're called. Um, in the, they're pads of paper with places to put your name in the center aisle. So if you would please sign those and pass them down, it's how we know who is here today. Our first song this morning is 3152. It is a new song. Now my book is gone. I must have walked out with it. Oh. I'm going to play the melody since it's a new song. That's okay. You can have it. I'll get another one. Yeah. We'll get another one. That's okay. Let's stand and sing this morning. The song name is Welcome. to worship. We are people of God, created to love. We will love the Lord our God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are people of God, determined 
to love. We will love our neighbors and treat them as we would be treated. We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity of favor. We choose to love both the lovely and the unlovable because love imitates God's nature. For the the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And please join me in the opening prayer. Here in this place, there are no foreigners, for all are welcome in God's house. Here in this worship, there is only acceptance, for love is the language of faith. Here in our lives, there are no divisions, for God dwells in each of us. Come, let us worship in unity and love. I invite the young people to come forward for life's little lessons. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Oh, here comes some more. Make room for the little ones. Have a seat. Do you want to sit down? Yeah? Okay. Come sit right here. There. Perfect. All right. Oh, hi, Amelia. I'm Emily. Does anybody know what this is? Library card. That's right. It's a library card. It's my most used card in my wallet. So it's a membership card to the Jack Russell Public Library. If you don't already have one, you should definitely get one because you can use it all the time. One of the great things about it is that it's available to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter if your skin is red, brown, yellow, black, or white. It doesn't matter where you were born or who your parents were. Everyone is welcome at the library. Another great thing about the library is that once you become a member, you're entitled to all the benefits and services that the library provides. You can check out books and videos, and sometimes you can get music CDs. It's very exciting. You can video games. Ooh, I never thought of that. Do they have that there? Oh, wow. Wow. You can even use the computer there. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you know that it costs nothing to join the library? You don't have to give them any money. It's totally free. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's free to get a card. What about the rainbow? We want to have colors. You have colors in the rainbow? Yes. You're right. Uh Uh-huh. So it's a pretty good picture of what it's like to be a member of the family of God, comparing it to the library. Because the Bible tells us that when we trust in Jesus and we're united with him in baptism, we're all children of God. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, what color your skin is, who your mom or dad are. We're all a part of the family of God. We're all brothers and sisters. Yeah. The Bible also tells us that when you belong to the family through Jesus, you're entitled to all the benefits of being a child of God. All the promises that God has made in this world belong to you. And wait a minute, I have one more question. Do you know how much it costs to become a part of the family of God? Free. Free, right, Brooks, you're right. It costs nothing. Zip, zero, nada, nothing. And going is a part of house. Yes, you're right. Could we all pray together? Okay, you want to fold your hands like this? Yeah, thank you, Amelia. Dear Father, 
We are thankful that we can become your children through faith in Jesus Christ. We are thankful that it doesn't matter whether we are girls or boys, black or white. We're thankful that in Christ we all become one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Guess what day it is. Get your change out. It's Noisy Coin Collection. So who didn't get to do it last time? Anybody? Anybody who didn't? Okay. We'll give you one. And then when you've collected some, you can, okay, you can go with someone. Yeah, hang on. We're going to let the children that didn't do it last time do it this time. Who didn't get to do it? You didn't? Okay. So then you go with someone, and then they can give you the can, okay? We'll share, okay? All right, let's go. Miss Linda's going to play a song. Let's go collect some change. God, thank you for loose change and for noisy children. We are grateful for both. We ask that you help us to use this money in mission for our church. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The first scripture reading today is from the book of Psalms. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 7. I offer my life to you, Lord. My God, I trust you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. Instead, let those who are treacherous without excuse be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me, because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Lord, remember your compassion and faithful love. They are forever. But don't remember the sins of my youth or my wrongdoing. Remember me only according to your faithful love for the sake of your goodness, Lord.
The second scripture reading today is from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. During the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A man with his wife and two sons went from Bethlehem of Judah to dwell in the territory of Moab. The name of that man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. They had two sons. They were from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the territory of Moab and settled there. But Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Then only she was left, along with her two sons. They took wives for themselves, Moabite women. The name of the first was Orpah, and the name of the second was Ruth. And they lived there for about 10 years. But both of the sons, Malan and Chilion also died. Only the woman was left, without her two children and without her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the field of Moab, because while in the territory of Moab, she had heard that the Lord had paid attention to his people by providing food for them. She left the place where she had been, and her two daughters-in-law went with her, 
they went along the road to return to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go, turn back each of you to the household of your mother. May the Lord deal faithfully with you, just as you have done with the dead and with me. May the Lord provide for you so that you may find security, each woman in the household of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. But they replied to her, No, instead we will return with you to your people. Naomi replied, Turn back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Will there again be sons in my womb that they would be husbands for you? Turn back, my daughters. Go. I am too old for a husband. If I were to say that I have hope, even if I had a husband tonight, and even more if I were to bear sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you refrain from having a husband? No, my daughters. This is more bitter for me than for you, since the Lord's will has come out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so, if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. Thank you. Welcome to week three of our Wholehearted Living series. You don't have the cards in your bulletins anymore, but I'm sure we can find one lying around if you'd like one. But so far we've talked about the different ideas of time and how we spend it. We looked at habits last week and how there are routines that shape our lives whether we realize it or not. Sometimes we simply do things out of habit. So the objective of the last two weeks has been to bring an awareness to your life of how you spend your time. Redeeming our ordinary is about knowing what we do and then ensuring that it is honoring and praising to God. That's a tall order. I get it. It's as simple as maybe setting your alarm 30 minutes earlier in the day so you can exercise, right? And then using that time to mindlessly scroll on Facebook instead. Admit it. Habits are so hard to break, and new ones are so hard to implement. But we try, and we fail, and we receive grace, and we try again. At some point, hopefully something sticks. And that is our journey of faith as well. Not always pretty, but always worth it. So today we're shifting gears a little bit. We're going to look at one of our basic needs as humans, and that is connection and belonging. The others that we're going to dive in in the next few weeks are physical health and wellness, financial stability, leisure or fun, that's coming up on Halloween Sunday, meaningful work, and then hope. In thinking about healthy relationships, what comes to mind? Now, if you walked into a Barnes and Noble section and you went straight to the self-help, you would find hundreds of titles on how to better yourself, as well as how to be a better partner, spouse, friend, pastor, whatever. I searched online. I googled books on healthy relationships, and I got 1.6 million results. Now, I like to read, but that was even a little overwhelming to me. I did bring the books that I used in this, in this sermon today, too, called, they're both by Brene Brown. Braving the Wilderness and the Gifts of Imperfection. We'll talk more about those. But everyone has a need to belong. Human relationships are complex and messy, and they take courage. 
And this morning we're going to take a look at what it means to be an outsider through the eyes of Ruth and how God can redeem even that. When we learn to love ourselves as we are, we can embrace who God created us to be. Now, I read both of these books this week, and this is the one, as you can see, I poured over in detail. Braving the Wilderness, the subtitle is The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone. Now, for a bit of background, Brene Brown is a cultural star of self-help. She probably has several shelves of titles in Barnes & Noble. Her books are everywhere. She's a friend of Oprah. I don't know what that gives you as status, but she does online podcasts, etc., and on and on. However, she is also a respected research professor at the University of Houston and holds a PhD in social work. She's not a fly-by-night self-help author. She deliberately chose the path of taking her work to the masses instead of simply writing academic blather for other professors. It cost her a lot, if you read her story, but she stands by helping people in the community navigate life. Her research is on the ever-popular topics, I've used this before, of shame and vulnerability. And vulnerability is absolutely necessary in authentic connection. Now, she defines belonging as the innate human desire to be part of something larger than ourselves. Because this need is so primal, we often try to acquire it by fitting in and seeking approval, which are hollow substitutions for true belonging. She says that we can only find true belonging if we show up as our authentic, messy, imperfect selves. Now, this definition evolved for Brene Brown as she did more research, and she added this. Belonging is not something we achieve or accomplish with others. It's something we carry in our hearts. Now, we can look at our world today and social media, and some of us, even our own families, can feel like a combat zone sometimes. There is division everywhere. We sort people into categories. But underneath all of that, we are connected to each other by something greater than ourselves, love and the human spirit. We are part of the same spiritual story. But we do sort ourselves into different factions. We like to huddle together with like-minded people, to connect with someone who is fundamentally different than yourself takes vulnerability because we have to let go of the blame and shame game and the anger, and that's hard. There's a lot of hurt. And at times, we never get past the surface to understand the other or to share a connection. Now, spirituality, according to Brown, is recognizing and celebrating that we are inextricably connected to each other. As Christians, this is by God. And this connection is grounded in love, and compassion. God loves you, and God loves me. It doesn't matter who either of us voted for. Bill Bishop wrote a book called The Big Sort way back in 2009 already, and he said that as we sort ourselves into geographic, political, and even spiritually like-minded groups, we now live in a giant feedback loop hearing our own thoughts about what's right and wrong bounce back to us by the TV shows we watch, the books we read, the articles we read, the blogs we read, the sermons we hear, and the neighborhoods we live in. Because we like to stay in our boxes. And we make assumptions when we do that about the people around us based on our ideas and our own feedback loop and, our, and that in turn fuels disconnection and we are made for connection. Disconnection fuels loneliness. Even when we gather, because you can be lonely in a group if you feel like you don't belong. It's not a place, if it's not a place where connection is alive, where you can't feel the spirit, if you come into the group and you feel like an outsider, like Ruth, you will be lonely. This church, this community, needs to be diverse. It has to be welcoming to everyone. People have to feel safe talking about hard things. Otherwise, 
we are nothing more than a country club for folks to come in and pay and socialize for a week. An hour a week, I should have said, not a whole week, unless you want to pay extra. This might be tough to hear, but true belonging is the only way that we can create a faith community that is pleasing to God who created us. When we are created to be in connection, our brains and our biology, according to research, are hardwired to be social, and people are lonelier now than ever before because clearly separating ourselves as, mu as much as possible from people that we think are different from us has not developed that deep sense of belonging that we are hardwired to crave because we don't like to be vulnerable. We crave and prefer our security. Now, the story of Ruth and Naomi is about security, but it also, also shows us vulnerability as they were willing to endure stepping outside their box. And this willingness to do hard things ultimately guides them down a path which leads to Bethlehem and a baby named Jesus. Naomi is an Israelite woman living in Moab. She's worked hard every day of her life. But in that place and time, neither she or her daughters are permitted to inherit property. In that society, a woman belongs wholly and completely to her husband. And should she be widowed, her sons who do have the right to inherit are duty-bound to take some of those resources and use them to care for her. But there were no sons. They died too. So then her husband's brother is required to take her in. But Naomi is an immigrant. She has no husband, she has no son, she has no brother-in-law. The only family she has are her two daughters-in-law, who are Moabites, and they have their own families in the area. They will be taken care of. So Ruth decides to go back home. She sets aside her craving for security and follows her mother-in-law, Naomi. Ruth could have stayed. She could have stayed with her family and been secure. But she gives that up for one reason and one reason only, love. In taking those first steps down the windy, dusty road to Bethlehem, Ruth declares her decision to live on the edge of risk. And in doing so, she trades her physical security for spiritual security. And as she makes that faithful decision, she puts all of her trust in God. And as it turns out, the road she and Naomi travel will lead to Bethlehem in more ways than one. Because Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. This very same Ruth becomes, by the sheer grace of God, ancestor not only to King David, but also to Jesus himself. Ruth's personal journey leads her to Bethlehem, but in a spiritual journey, a spiritual sense, her journey le also leads to a certain Bethlehem night, centuries in the future. A certain descendant of Ruth named jo Joseph smiles at his wife Mary, who's holding a newborn baby in her arms. In this story, the key is a willingness to be vulnerable in order to belong, to take a risk, to look outside an established, sordid box, to risk security for love. So how willing are we to let go of what the culture holds so dear? Sorting people into categories. How willing are we to reach out and get to know someone's humanity, despite their political leanings, despite what color their skin is, despite their gender identity, despite their religious leanings, and on and on. We are called to love. We are called to love God, and we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. And our neighbors, people, are everywhere, and everyone. May it be so. Amen. This week, you have your Take Home, Take Heart page, just like every week. It, all, it has the two scriptures that were read, and then on the back, it asks you to do a little exercise about the groups that you belong to and list them. It gives you the instructions to do a relationship map. The instructions are on the sheet, 
And there are some questions to ask yourselves after you write down your name in the center and then put all the people around of whom you are in a relationship with and then connect lines to them and ask these questions so that you can pray over it. Use this any way that you see fit. Let us stand and sing our next song together, number 347, Spirit Song. announcements are in your bulletin. I would call your attention to next Sunday morning. If any of you are interested in learning more about the church and or joining, grab a cup of coffee and a snack and meet me in the chapel at 945. We will have coffee and talk. And also, coffee hosts are needed. I know that we didn't have anyone signed up for today, so the hospitality team generously did it, right? Yeah. But we do need hosts if we want to keep it going. Um, I know we all enjoy the 9.30 service, so let's find some people to, to help us to build connection and stay in relationship with one another. Um, the rest of the announcements you can read. If you have anyone who is a post-high school graduate, please get us their name and their address to the office or to Amy Sutheimer so that we can send them um, care packages occasionally. Anything else? Victoria. Oh, walking in the parade on at three o'clock on Saturday, November thirteenth, in the Hartford Christmas Parade. See, Vic 
It's the 13th. I think so. Yes, November 13th. Because the 14th is a Sunday. And um, see Karen Bidwell or Victoria. Okay, the, the Advent Luncheon is on Saturday, December 11th. And if you're interested in hosting a table for that, Victoria will be in, in coffee hour. Any joys that you would like to share today? Yes, Michelle. Grayson is here with us today, and his sister Amelia. Yes, awesome, what a joy. Any other joys? Aiden. All right, well that is a miracle. Yay, good for Christian. He's growing up fast. <laughs> As we look to praying for people, we did have Norm Aiken's funeral here on Wednesday, and our sympathy goes out to the family. Also, we are continuing to pray for Scott Robbie, Danny Dahl, Mark Martin, who is home. He was in the hospital last weekend. Megan Schatz, Marianne Hack, Jessica Murphy, Corinne, and Annette, Angelo's mom and aunt, Doris Lapine and Kay Nedra's mom and Harry Dietz. Also, we want to share the joy of Ben Perman and Lee who got married in Colorado yesterday. So we want to, we share the joy with the family and friends that are celebrating that. Yes. Kathy Hack shares that a neighbor with four children had a water main break in, their, in the ceiling above their kitchen yesterday, and while they were gone, it flooded the whole first floor and basement. So prayers for them as they deal with this. Stephanie. Prayers for um, Stephanie Klockow's neighbor, Gail, for a health scare or emergency, and also prayers for Becky, who received a cancer diagnosis and will be having surgery. Any others? That's okay, go ahead. She's got one. So prayers for Drew Lichtensteiger's grandpa, Don, as he deals with some health issues and his moving into assisted living. Heidi. Prayers for Anne, who's dealing with the second anniversary of her young husband's death. So we pray for her. Angelo. Yes. Angelo's mom is um, moving on to a new treatment beginning Wednesday, and so we continue to pray for her. Anything else? 
Let's pray. God, you are a God of hospitality. There is none like you that invites everyone to come to you. You invite all to your home, to your table, and into your arms. Lord, that all would hear and receive this good news and help us to remember that no one is better than anyone else in your kingdom and help us to treat each other the way that you treat people. And because you treat us with your tender love, we take the time now to pray for our friends and our family members and others who need you now more than ever. Pour out your healing on all who need it. Be generous with your transforming love. Send strength and comfort to those who are grieving. Be with those who are dealing with illness. Be with those who have lost a loved one, those who are dealing with the ramifications of so much gun violence in our area. We ask that you be with all of us as we continue to walk this journey of faith, to pray for one another, and to learn how to love and listen better. We gather all of our prayers together today, and we pray, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I would ask our ushers to come forward to take our morning offering.
pray our prayer of thanksgiving in unison. Please join me. Excrepigantly generous God, there is nothing we have, there is nothing we require, there is nothing we long for that does not pale when placed beside the relationship you've offered to us. As we bring our gifts to you, remind us of the covenant you put before Israel. If they will be my people, I will be their God. Receive what we give in gratitude for your invitation and help us to be your people, reflected in our love for you and for all your children. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who gave all there was to give to us. Amen. Our closing song today is number 2150, In the Faith We Sing, Lord Be Glorified. place today knowing that you belong regardless because you are not what you what you were you're not what you did you are beloved by God and let us go from this place learning to love better and to connect better and go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said amen, amen.